Hello, let's talk about extraction of a fractured tooth. This tooth was fractured horizontally along the root, extracted it, and then grafted the socket with platelet-rich fibrin combined with mineralized, demineralized bone. So you can see the fractured tooth here, and here's the horizontal fracture subalveolar crest. So there was no saving the tooth. You know, you think, well, could you have placed a, a post and core and crown? No, you can see there are other fractures right here. Uh, this gentleman in Texas isn't this perfect. He was kicked in the mouth by a cow. And so since this fracture is subalveolar crest, there's no thought of saving the tooth. And you can see how this is a fracture right here. And so we just want to extract it and place an implant. So you can look up the link and how to give a painless and profound local anesthesia. One of the key things, if you're doing anything serious, like a root canal or a crown prep or extracting a tooth, you must give intraligamental injection in combination with either infiltration on the maxilla in the maxillary arch or a mandibular block in the mandibular arch. But you must give intraligamental. You want the bevel to point toward the tooth in this case, and you're using sit and plane. Watch that video. You want that tooth dead numb. You're also going to give it on the palatal. I'll show you how to give a painless palatal injection in uh, dentistrymasterclasses.com video. So I'm using an elevator and just moving this just to get blood in the uh, ligament space. As Dr. Cosentino used to say, let, let the blood help you just to get it moving I'm trying to preserve the facial bone. And remember when you're extracting incisors, you want to unscrew those teeth. So I want to just move it, not facially, palatally, but just want to unscrew it like you're unscrewing a screw. Now initially, I'd intended to place the implant at the time of extraction. I normally like to place the implant at the time of extraction if it's a single rooted tooth. If it's a multi-rooted tooth, I never place the implant at the time of extraction. I always graft the socket and come back later in six months and place the implant. The reason for that is you want to place the implant in the area of the furcation in a multi-rooted tooth and you can't get it right if you try to place it at the time of extraction, if it's an, a multi-rooted tooth. But these single-rooted teeth, it's ideal to go ahead and place it most of the time at the time of extraction. And that's what I intended to do here. But once I reflected the tissue and actually got part way into the uh, osteotomy, I realized there was too much bone loss on the facial from that uh, fracture the infection and the inflammation to place it at the time so we bone grafted it so I'm going to show you how to bone how to graft these sockets so there's the root now making a full thickness flap reflection removing the interproximal soft tissue and just making my incision in the sulcus and I'm first just wanting, always do this with a single root of tooth because I want to view the alveolar crest position on the facial and the palatal because you never know when there's going to be a dehiscence or a fenestration and be no bone on the facial, which we found here you, you can't tell by looking when the flap is in place. So you always want to reflect a bit of a flap so you can view the alveolar crest and really the entire facial surface of the bony plate to be sure there's not a fenestration or dehiscence. In other words, the, the bone on the facial surface is gone. So I'm making a releasing incision. And when you make that releasing incision, you want to leave the papilla in the part you're reflecting. So you've got something to suture to when you suture to the palate. 
to the palatal tissue. So I'm remove, reflecting this flap. See, I've got the releasing incision over here. And you can see how much bone is missing on the palate, on the facial. Removing all that soft tissue. These are rongiers. Let's be sure all the soft tissue is gone. I'm removing the interproximal soft tissue and curetting real well. And you want to reflect past the bone loss area so you have a clear view of how much bone loss has taken place. Now I'm drawing blood for PRF, platelet-rich fibrin. Remember, platelet-rich fibrin is rich in growth factor. So sometimes I'll use platelet-rich fibrin alone. Sometimes I'll mix it with mineralized, demineralized uh, artificial bone. And normally I'll draw two to four vials of blood and then spin that down so I've got plenty of platelet-rich fibrin. Always, always, we always run two cycles of eight minutes, 16 minutes total, because we find after one cycle, many times the, the PRF clot has not formed completely, but it does after two. So here it is. The PRF is the yellow part in the top of the clot. So you want to separate that from the red part and put it on this perforated tray. They kind of look like little caterpillars. And then you put the lid on the tray and it squishes the serum out of the platelet rich fibrin, which collects in the bottom of the tray. So I'm measuring and the thing, the reason I, now I go ahead and, and make my osteotomy for my implant part of it. But then I realize as I get into it, it's going to be too hard to judge where the final uh, alveolar crest will be on the, pal on the facial surface because all this bone is missing. So this is a great technique for implant placement. See, and I've got this uh, endostop at the level of the alveolar crest on the palate. So at this endostop is at the alveolar crest level on the palate and the interproximal because I don't have any bone on the facial. Then we're going to take a radiograph of that and you can see it's parallel to the adjacent teeth. And then I like the dentist implant system. I'm not going to place the implant. I'm thinking I'm going to initially, but once I get into the process, I realize it's better to graft it and come back once I've regrown the bone. The, the best laid plans sometimes go awry once you get into the heat of battle. And so don't ever be afraid to abort a procedure if you realize things are not what you thought they would be. I like this system because all these drills have shoulders on them which mark, <coughs> which mark the extent of the osteotomy. You don't have to try to watch those black lines or silver lines and tell how deep you are. This stops it with the shoulder. You can see these shoulders right here. I love this system. I do not like their actual implant system though because they don't have a, a closed tray impression coping. So I'm using the BioHorizons implant system because they've got a good closed tray impression coping. Dentist does not have, so I'm using their drills and using BioHorizons implants. A lot, there are a lot of good implants out there. BioHorizons is just one. I'm hoping one day somebody gets the whole implant system correctly. It has all the parts. I haven't found it yet. So now I'm going with my 2.2 drill. You can see the shoulder right here, but I don't have any uh, facial alveolar crest, alveolar process. So I'm thinking I'm going to place the implant, so I'm drilling just to the level of the alveolar crest in approximately and on the palatal. This is the 2.8, lots of water. I'm going to take a radiograph of this drill in place to be sure I'm parallel with the adjacent teeth. You may want to take one of the 2.2 and you can, there's nothing wrong with taking one of every drill, but you can see this shoulder is about on the level of the interproximal and the palatal alveolar crest. All this bone is missing on the facial. And it's about now that I decide to abort the 
implant placement procedure and I decided to just graft it. So these are the PRF plugs after the serum has been squeezed out of them. I'm drawing up the serum in a syringe and here's my either BioOS or Maxius mineralized demineralized bone. BioOS has a large particle size and a small and Maxius has a small so I like either one of them. And I'm going to cut this up so that I've got the growth factor in the freeze-dried bone. Now, why would I mix them? Why would I mix them together? Why not just use the PRF? I like the stability of the matrix, matrix of the freeze-dried bone, so I can build up that socket, rebuild the uh, the uh, alveolar process. If it's just PRF, I know that works, and it's fine if you just have a osteotomy. But if you're also missing the facial, I like to have some particles so I can actually sculpt it. I'll show you here in just a minute, but I want to mix this together. So I've squirted the serum into the mineralized, demineralized bo artificial bone, and then I'm cutting up the PRF into small pieces and mixing it all together. See, I've got a, I've got a matrix. I've got something I can work with. Working with PRF is kind of like working with jello. It just moves. And so this gives it some, some body. And I want to overbuild this just a little bit, overpack it, where you've actually got a bulge. So to do that, I'm going to have to cut another releasing scission here down to the non-keratinized or non-attached gingiva so I can pull it over a little further. If you're just in the keratinized gingiva, the attached gingiva, you can't pull the flap up over the surgical site and close the flap. I don't care if I close it completely, if it's approximated uh, completely, especially if you're using PRF because I'm going to put a, a piece of that PRF on top of the surgical site along with a resorbable collagen membrane. Here's my other releasing incision. I'm leaving this papilla in the flap. So I, I've got something to suture to the palatal tissue. And whenever you, you make a releasing incision, you don't make it straight up and down vertically. You kind of angle it a little bit this way and that way so you've got a greater base of blood, blood flow. See, so I've reflected that into the non-attached, non-keratinized uh, tissue so I can pull it up a little further when I close the flap. Now this is a slab of that PRF and then this is contour adapt resorbable collagen membrane and I want to place this flap way up in you know under the non-attached gingiva so it completely covers the surgical site and I'm going to trim it uh, after I've tried it in. So I want to tuck it in to the pal under the palatal tissue and I want it to be way under the flap so it completely covers that surgical site. What's the point of resorbable collagen membrane? Soft tissue grows faster than osseous. So you want to give the bone a head start on the soft tissue. This resorbable collagen membrane will last about three months. So it lets the bone have a three month head start to uh, fill the void uh, before the t soft tissue starts growing in. So you get a good hard osseous uh, socket. So this is 3-0 gut suture and I'm using that to close the flap. And I'm going to place one on the mesial and one on the distal of the surgical site and one across the middle of the surgical site. Then I'm going to suture the releasing flaps with 4-0 gut suture. And that suture will dissolve in four to seven days. So I've got the, freeze, the artificial bone. I've got the PRF slab on top of that. And then I've got the resorbable collagen membrane on top of that. And then I'm approximating the flaps, approximating the flaps as close as I can without blanching. You don't want to blanch the tissue. If you do, the suture will 
pull through. See how this is kind of bulked up on the facial. But because I've released the flap into the non-keratinized, non-attached gingiva, I can actually come close to approximating the flaps here. But I've, since I've got the PRF and the resorbable collagen membrane over the surgical site, that works just fine. Now I'm suturing uh, horizontally the releasing incision. See how I've taken a real deep bite. When you're suturing, you always want to take a deep bite, meaning I'm taking a bite all the way out to here. If you just take a bite to right there and right there, the suture will pull through. So you want to always take a deep bite. That's stable suturing. Now here's another trick when you're using gut suture, really any gut suture. The first time you wrap it, wrap it three times and it'll hold. If you only wrap it twice and pull it taut, it'll loosen up. So the first time, wrap it three times away from you and pull it tight, and then wrap it once towards you and pull it tight, then wrap it away from you once and pull it tight. And that will be a stable knot, a real deep bite. See, so I did one, two, three, pull away from me, one, pull toward me, and then one pull away from me. And that's the knot. Now I'm putting one more across the releasing incision here with 3-0. So 4-0 the horizontal stitches and then 3-0 this way. I just want it nice and tight. So there's the graft. It looks a little gnarly for a few weeks, but that'll heal beautifully. Then I'll come back in three months, three to six months, and place the implant. And I'll show you that in another Dental Minute video. It'll be in the library of DentistryMasterClasses.com. So that's the Dental Minute. These techniques work, and they work every time. Click on the blue link in the description below to register for Dentistry Masterclasses. Dot com. There's an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos plus many complete comprehensive cases. And we place new videos in DentistryMasterClasses.com weekly.